ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಉದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಪರಂ ಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಏಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವಧೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಾಂ ಓಂ ಎಡ್ವಡೇಶನ್ ಸು ಸದ್ಗುರು ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ದಿ ಗಿವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಎ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಭಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಈಥರ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಇಟರ್ನಲ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಥ್ರೀ ಗುಣಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿಫಿಕೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪ್ರಿಸೆಪ್ಟರ್ ಯೋಗ ವಾಶಿಷ್ಠ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಪೂರ್ವಾರ್ಧ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಥ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಚಾರ್ ಫಾರ್ ನಿಗೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ Lord Shiva is giving this wisdom to Sage Vashishtha. That's in the storyline. The basic point to understand is that it is most authentic teaching. Guru is Shiva himself and Vashishtha is the ideal aspirant. and vashishtha is relating this experience to shri rama now coming to the wisdom aspect from the point of view of an illumined seer this world is as unreal as horns on a rabbit these are all allegorical terms someone heard it and brought me a picture of rabbit with a horn what have you like understand these all allegory allegory not to be taken literal or as waves on mountain tops the rivers don't go up to the mountain tops to create waves existence is the only reality behind all these illusory projections the subtle mantra has to ring in your head asato ma sadgamaya all experiences that come in three aspects seer seen and sight and simple illustration is your dream all experiences of your dream the dream subject the dream world the world is very vast as vast as the world you are experiencing and your experiences you are facing challenges pleasure pain accidents as well as prosperous conditions in your dream but nothing of the dream is real is the horn of a rabbit real the only real is asatoma sadgamaya from this unreal lead me to the real the from dreaming stage lead me to awaken the stage when we use the term dream you are not just referring to the normal dream the world you are experiencing is very similar to dream to make a distinction we call it long dream 
O sage, the differences among objects are sustained by ignorance. By the exercise of spiritual knowledge, these differences are dissolved in the awareness of the non-dual Brahman. Now think of in your dream how there are so many things in your dream. And whenever I say so many things mean that there are every object is different from other objects. You are looking at multiplicity in your dream. Say for example you are holding a needle with a plan to needle up certain clothes and your cat is looking at you. <laughs> and someone is knocking at the door and suddenly there comes a thunder and a lightning and a crash. All these are different things, multiplicity. But nothing is real. All this is Sat, you, your own awareness. But your awareness, when you wake up, is again trapped in a dreamlike state. The real awakening is intuitional revelation. Aham Brahma, I am Brahman. That revelation means you have. Now you can look at the entire universe as Sat. Even while you are dreaming, if that awareness comes as it is a dream, that no matter what you are experiencing in your dream, you are detached from it. You are looking at it with amusement. So that's the state of the Jivan Mukta. In the ocean, the surging waves and whirlpools create a world of multiplicity. Yet all this is nothing but the ocean. In the same manner, those surging with apparent names and forms, this world is nothing but Brahman. Just as there is unity behind the flowers, buds, leaves and fruit of a creeper, in the same manner, it is a creeper of consciousness that has manifested itself in the apparent differences suggested by time, space, unity, duality, I-ness and mindness. Think of all these multiplicity of experiences. And all these experiences seem different from each other. Time is different from space. Unity is different from duality. Highness makes you feel like highness. Mindness. All, all these are so many distinctions. But all those distinctions move away when you wake up. O sage, it is the innermost self in a person which is ever untouched by the world of multiplicity. It is the sankalpa of the unenlightened mind that creates the erroneous notion of its involvement in the world process. Sankalpa term is your will, but your will is conditioned by law of karma. When law of karma conditions your will, 
योर संकल्पा इज नॉट सुसंकल्पा योर संकल्पा इज अ रॉन्ग टाइप ऑफ संकल्प बिकॉज कर्मा बेस्ड लाइफ इज लुकिंग फॉर ए गोल इन दर्ल्ड ऑफ टाइम स्पेस because that's all karma world can give to you but nivritti based life a karma where karmic law is transcended it is that life leads you to liberation so if you were to develop that will human everyone has always led by your state of evolution if you are gripped by pravritti your sankalpa is always to improve your condition in this world so many situations are there every day you want to get improved some near and dear one is suffering and you want the improvement money is lacking you want improvement viruses are jumping <laughs> and want to cure so to have sank again you have to understand when we study advanced teachings we should not suddenly get out of your practical reality in the practical world use your common sense next use your conscience your common sense and conscience are both inspired by god is god who as you advance your sadhana you do not have to ask for advice from others what should i do your common sense itself is on a high grade and it is authenticated by your own conscience the voice of conscience is linked to god's will so that type of development awaits in every aspirant just as there is unity behind flowers buds leaves fruits so all the multiplicity that i described there is unity behind all that unity is pure consciousness put it more extended way you that unity sat chit ananda pure existence sat sat is same as consciousness pure awareness and absolute awareness is same as absolute joy bliss o sage it is the innermost self in a person which is ever untouched by the world of multiplicity it is the sankalpa of the unenlightened mind that creates the erroneous notion of its involvement in the world process when sankalpa is removed one attains the realization of the non dual self the term sankalpa i have already explained to you and that's what the intention is behind the teachings to inspire an aspirant to understand the goal and develop an inner sankalpa may i attain if that purity of mind has not been promoted because that sankalpa requires nirmal man mind should be free of impurities anger greed and vasanas must be purified the higher the degree 
better is the effect. As this process goes on, the inner will within your heart about yourself, what you want, that will becomes automatic without your your mental definition of the will. Your whole personality is inspired to follow the path leading to liberation. So, in one word, you have developed the will to attain enlightenment. That's called Bhishma Pratigya. Mahabharata brings it out in a more elaborate way. Otherwise, your will is in the world of karma. And that's not the first type of will is Dridha Sankalpa. Once that will has developed, nothing can break it. Because this is moving from asat to sat, from unreal to real. So the will to attain reality, that's unshaken. Because this Satya Meva Jayate. Truth alone triumphs. So if that type of sankalpa is there for attaining liberation, that's absolute, unshaken. But as but when you deal with sankalpa in the realm of karma, that sankalpa is not this sankalpa. That's unstable. Unstable sankalpa can be two types, vicious, virtuous. But even good deeds that you are doing in the state of conditioned mind, they are not really leading you to liberation. They are simply improving your condition in the world of time and space. This doesn't mean that we are discouraging you from virtuous karma. When virtuous karmas are performed, you develop a choice between whether to stay with karma or to get out of karma. That choice will not come if you, do, if you are, do not have virtuous karma to support you. If you are gripped by negative karmas, then the life that you face is absolutely a life of compulsion. You have no choice. But when you be, do begin to do good deeds, Gradually, a field of choice begins to open before you. And when we adopt that choice between Shreya and Preya, Shreya that gives you the blessed goal, Preya that keeps you busy with the world, when you develop that choice, you are gradually led the will to follow the path of Shreya. As long as your intellect is not freed from the serpent of erroneous desires, you cannot attain freedom from the misery. Even if you were to abide in the Nandana gardens of the heavenly world, that's referring to heavenly enjoyment. You've done a lot of good karmas and as a result, you experience bhoga in astral plane. But that bhoga, no matter how intense joy you may get, is transient. Having exhausted good karma, you will come back again. And this has happened before. 
for every soul countless times therefore arouse this wind of viveka and drive away the clouds of desires now in order to develop that profound sankalpa start developing good good will and good resolve to pursue the paths that en- enable you to ascend the steps of wisdom once that discriminative vision viveka begins to develop you find a st- amazing strength in your will your strength in your of will becomes like a strength of wind in a hurricane or in cyclone how strong it is your will becomes so strong and the negative characteristics of your personality become very weak the source of your negative traits are your vasanas negative vasanas ashubha vasana this wind of your will drives away that vasana if you don't have that then you are gripped by your negative vasana again and again that's the predicament of challenging situations in life when you find yourself so gripped that you don't know where to go that being gripped and how strong is the grip is depends upon your degree of vairagya and viveka if your vivek shakti has developed your will will be immensely strong and you will not allow yourself to be gripped by negativity you will have patience apparently gripped but you will get out of it and shine brighter than before otherwise you are tumbling apparently from comfort to comfort pleasure to pleasure from one blanket to bigger blanket <laughs> let your heart be as pure as the sky in autumn that's the idea of developing shubha vasana pure purified state of vasana vasanas are like clouds shubha vasana is opaque the source of anger greed hate etc that's atub vas pure vasana is inspirer of all your good deeds allowing your understanding to become purified sanmati so that type of pure vasana begins to create wonders in your personality let your heart be as pure as the sky in autumn then you will discover your essential nature which is taintless and pure this led by shubh vasana you discover you are the very sun all the objects of the world that you are looking for they were illuminations of that sun instead of going after illuminations or reflections you are moving towards the sun by applying the magical charm of spiritual enquiry dry up the ocean of subtle desires vasana is like the whole ocean ashubha vasana subtle desires and what influences your vasana 
is your sadhana, antaranga sadhana, concentration, meditation, samadhi. But the highlight behind this antaranga sadhana is enquiry, that which opens the door for your intellect to become intuitional, your intellectual understanding to become inspiring understanding, inspirational understanding. Otherwise, intellectual understanding collects data. Your whole mind becomes a big dictionary of data, lot of intellectual. But that which gives you intuitional understanding, that's that process called vichar. And vichar again is practiced in a progressive manner. How you are reflecting upon who am I? Today, same will not be exactly the same few days later, months later. In your sadhana, how you practiced your vichar a few years before or even few days before. In other words, your vichar process advances in qualitatively. Also remember when we talk of vichar, don't forget vichar is one of the four gatekeepers at the palace of liberation. Shama, serenity, santosh, contentment, satsang, good association, vichar, inquiry or reflection. All these four are interrelated. If you don't have serenity of mind, you cannot have effective vichar. And similarly, contentment. If you don't have contentment, you will not have serenity. And in order to have these qualities, you have to have satsanga. Your associations should not be backed up by illusion. Good association must be promoted. The soul has been drifting in the storm of subtle desires. This storm should be stopped by the mountain of discriminative intellect, Vivek. And the soul should be led to discover its essential nature. Since this self is endowed with all powers, it is able to identify itself with whatever object it fancies. Even in the world of illusion, how much deluded can you be is unimaginable. But what do you learn from it? Because the soul has that power to create negativity beyond imagination. The soul's power is so great. If you ask the soul to create negativity, there is no end to it. These allegorical teachings imply simple point is you are being told that understand you have such amazing strengths within yourself. If you begin to follow the path of integral yoga in life, highlighting practice of bhakti and spiritual inquiry, jnana. This world is nothing but the imaginations of the mind. All experiences 
that come in the category of the three, seer, seen and sight, are allegorically described as simple imaginations, just like imaginations come in your mind. So, the jiva creates all that led by karma. But nothing remains steady. When the mental imaginations are given up by discovering one's essential nature, one becomes Brahman. If you rise beyond these imaginations, then there is a revelation of who am I? If you wake up from your dream, there is a revelation that you are untouched by all the dream, all the things that you experienced in your dream. For example, a king who has lost his own identity imagines himself to a mere beggar. But when he is informed of his true nature, he asserts, I am the king, not the beggar. All these are illustrations to show your identity is confused. There is identity crisis. And in that state, mind creates strange illusion that becomes the basis of deep depression. And people come to a state of even committing suicide because they have their idea that they are completely lost. I am drowning, I'm drowned. If you really drown, you don't be crying. <laughs> <laughs> but all the grief that is you are expressing in your mind about yourself is as humorous as a person being told your wife has become a widow. And he begins to grieve, <laughs> grieve and injure himself. And another illustration is given in Vedanta. The nine people crossing a river and they begin to count if now the nine has come or not. But each one forgets to count himself. And then all the nine are crying for the night that is lost. So that's the predicament of misery, sorrow in the world. In the same way, the self has, as it were, forgotten its true identity. And in the state of forgetfulness, it has entered the world process of repeated births and deaths. However, when it discovers its true identity with the help of a spiritual inquiry, it realizes, I am Brahman, and experiences the cessation of all miseries. O sage, the Lord Shiva is imparting this wisdom to Vashishtha. O sage, the constant recollection or affirmation that I am Brahman, this is the ideal sadhana to be promoted by an aspirant. First, live your daily life according to the plan of integral yoga. And when you practice meditation, your meditation should be highlighted by affirmation that I am not the body, I am neither mind nor body, immortal self am I. The affirmation that climaxes with 
आई एम ब्रह्मन अहम ब्रह्मास्मि दिस एफर्मेशन इज द हाईएस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ मेंटल वर्शिप ऑफ द सुप्रीम सेल्फ all your aradhana and worship and invocation climaxes with aham brahmasmi the affirmation i am brahman so therefore understand that if you are sadhana your worship and your sadhana is leading your mind away from brahman then that's not a real progress real sadhana the authenticity of your sadhana is to open your mind to vichar and vichar that leads to the revelation aham brahmasmi compared to this ritualistic worship which is possible only in the realm of duality this divine worship compared to that all the ritualistic worship is insignificant the differences and multiplicities that ex- exist on the basis of time space and other modifications are in reality nothing but pure consciousness this is affirmation while affirming up creating a formation your mind should be directed towards i am pragyanam brahma i am pure consciousness first try to think of what consciousness means and be more quiet serene to understand that you are experiencing so many things you are aware but aware of this aware of that every moment your awareness changing but what is behind all these changes again the answer is awareness that awareness which is unalterable in the midst of changing modes of awareness that's pragyanam and that is the reality in everyone as awareness you are ever the same eternal immutable because you are not the body you are not the mind you are not the intellect you are pure awareness so each time you direct your attention to your awareness you must realize that you are constantly in association with god that awareness is god mind goes on asking oh god how why have you forgotten me why have you separated me try to understand even when you are asking the question there is an awareness about asking what is that awareness that awareness is god himself try to grow up to realize that you cannot separate yourself from god and you don't have to go far and wide to meet sacred places here and now were enfolded by god's presence that god is pure aware that god is you not your ego ego being shed the ego identity being shed the real identity in all is brahman the absolute all other identities are mere imaginations of the mind this pure consciousness is known as brahman 
truths that Brahma needs now, these are synonyms. When he talk of truth, truth alone triumphs. God, Shiva, Void, the non-dual absolute, all these are similar names, like synonymous. This word process is like the leaves, flowers and fruits of the mysterious creeper of your consciousness. Think of your dream. Dream is nothing but the play of consciousness. Every detail of your dream. You are looking in your dream and enjoying a beautiful tree. The entire tree movement is your, your own consciousness. This consciousness having put on the multicolored garment of ignorance. Multicolored garment of ignorance imply whatever you are experiencing are like reflections and you are make, making the reflections define your world while all the time you are pure consciousness. It's like a lake has forgotten its identity and lost itself in reflection. This jivahood is sustained by an erroneous vision similar to the way in which defective eyes see two moons in the sky instead of one. All the simplest illustration is being given. The entire world of reality for your eyes and you can shut them up the reality is the sun and you can shut the sun up by just putting your hand over your eyes. How powerful you are. That's the power of ignorance. Led by ignorance, this consciousness in the form of the jiva imagines itself to be different from Brahman the same mind that will lead you to Brahman creates the illusion mind is the cause of bondage and release. The mind that is not disciplined by yoga, integral yoga and which are, continues to weave the web of illusion. It draws to itself a subtle body known as Puriyashtaka. Subtle body is described in Yoga Vashishtha having eight ingredients, eight factors that go to form your subtle body. The subtle body has, is, implies it has causal body also in it. And so, those eight ingredients are ignorance, desire, action, avidya, kama, karma, panch tattvas, five elements, panch jnanendriyas, panch karmendriyas, senses, organs of action, panch pranas, five vital forces, all these together come called Puriyashtaka. That soul, that pure Brahman, now has become into the illusion that I am this composite of eight factors. I am Puriyashtaka. Thus having identified with subtle body, the jiva enters the stream of the world process, led by subtle desires and deep-rooted karmic impressions. It experiences repeated births and deaths. In brief, the subtle body becomes 
identified with physical body. And in that state, body after body, and experience as birth and death, because if your identity is physical body, then you have your birth date and you will have your death date. <laughs> and dates continue unending. But you are dateless. And that's the good news. And with this I will continue. Om Ram 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 Om Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Prayer for shower of Karuna Mayra's grace of God over all with the blessings of Shakti. Shakti, Bhakti and Mukti. Om Triyambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Purvarukum Vabandhana Mrityor Mukhyama Mritat Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyant Ma Kashvidukabhad Bhavet Om Shanti 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 हरिओम तत्सु